Hello, welcome to this Control Web Panel tutorial. In this video, we're going to discuss how to integrate WHMCS into CWP. Many CWP users enjoy using WHMCS, Web Hosting Management Complete Solution, and for good reason. WHMCS easily integrates with all the leading control panels, including CWP, and now we're going to show you how. The first step is to download the WHMCS module for CWP from our site at dl1.centos-webpanel.com slash files slash third party slash WHMCS slash CWP7 dot zip. Once downloaded, use your preferred FTP client to connect to your WHMCS account. This can also be done by using the CWP file manager if the WHMCS is installed on the server with CWP. You can use the username and password of the account where WHMCS is installed. Then you can extract the zip file, and refresh your browser. And then you can copy this to the public HTML modules servers folder. And when you're done, the extracted module will look like this public HTML slash modules slash servers slash CWP7 slash CWP7.php. Next, we'll generate an API key on the CWP server. From the CWP admin panel dashboard, go to the left sidebar and open the CWP settings submenu. Then scroll down and select API manager. This opens the API access management module and we can click the green button for allow new API access. Here we'll give our API access a short name. We'll call this WHMCS. And for IP origin, we'll input the IP of WHMCS. For key code, we can input one if we already have one. In this case, we'll just hit generate to generate a brand new one. The format request, we can select either JSON or XML, but this format request should be in JSON format. For owner, we should select a user with administrative privileges. And then to set the API functions, there's a quick button here for WHMCS. We can just click that and automatically all of the required API functions are enabled. Then we can click the blue button for create. And before we leave, we'll just highlight the key code and copy that to our clipboard. Now let's head back to our dashboard and we'll access the firewall management by clicking the firewall icon at the top. Here, we'll need to open port 2304 or whitelist the WHMCS IP. If we whitelist the IP, then we don't need to open the port 2304. But this is only the case if we are only using the CWP default CSF firewall. If you have a custom firewall on the network, or NAT network routing, then you will need to open port 2304 or set up port forwarding there as well. If you have a server with Amazon S3, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure, etc., then you would also need to set up in the management of that server port forwarding and or open port 2304. So in this case, we'll just go down to the whitelist configuration and click the green button to add an entry. And we'll input the WHMCS IP and add. And that adds the entry to our whitelist, but in order for it to commit, we need to restart the firewall. So we can do that either here by clicking the quick restart firewall, or we can do that from the restart menu by clicking restart, restart firewall. And now we can go back And we'll see in our firewall manager under the whitelist configuration that we have now added the WHMCS IP to our whitelist configuration. Now let's head to WHMCS and log in.
And now in the menu across the top, we'll select the Setup dropdown and navigate down to Products and Services and select Servers. And this is where we can configure all of our servers so that WHMCS can communicate with them. And to add a new server, we'll just click the button here, Add New Server. So here we'll give our new server a name. We'll call this one CWP Demo. And for host name, we need to provide our IP for CWP. So let's go back to CWP here and we'll look at the dashboard. And we can get the IP from our address bar at the top, but also from the dashboard, if we scroll down, we've got our CWP info here. So we'll use this server IP here. We'll copy that, go back to WHMCS and paste that IP as our host name and our IP address. Now we'll scroll down a bit and here for name servers, for primary and secondary name server, we'll input the same IP and go back to CWP and here are the name servers. You can see they're similar except for NS1 and NS2. So we'll just copy that one and paste that one into primary and paste that one into secondary and adjust it for NS2. And then for server type, we will select CWP7. And for username, we'll input our CWP username with administrative privileges and password. Now for the access hash, we'll go back to CWP and go to CWP settings. And at the bottom here, we've got API manager. And here we have the API key that we created. So let's highlight that and copy, and then back to WHMCS and paste that in the access hash. And then lastly, we just got to check mark the secure to uh, use SSL mode for connections. Then we can save our changes. And now our new server has been added and is ready for use. So to test this, let's go to products and services and we'll create a new product using our new CWP server. So here we'll create a new product. And this is for a hosting account, CWP server. And we'll just call this one CWP test demo and continue. And for module settings, we'll assign this module name to CWP7. And then we can configure our package number. This will be our CWP package number, whatever packages we have set up in our CWP. This will reflect the package number that we're assigning to this product. And the defaults here are set for no file, inodes, and nprox. And we can set this for do not automatically set up or to automatically set up as soon as the order is placed. And save the changes. Okay, so now we've got a product set up. So let's go to clients. We'll add a new client here. And we'll just call this client test and email is test and we'll go ahead and create that as a client and now for this test client here we can go to products and services and we can click here to place a new order and for the product we will select the CWP test demo we just created and for domain we'll call this test test.com and submit that order. And now when we go to view that client, here's our client here. And look back in products and services. We can see that all the module commands have been added to their order here. So from our CWP, if we take a look at user accounts, we can see that currently our CWP has a total number of four accounts. And here they are here. And none of them are the test test client. So let's go back to WHMCS. And now for this client here, test test, we will go ahead and 
create a client? Yes. And WHMCS is communicating with CWP now. And we can go back to CWP and refresh our page. And you can see that our total number of accounts is increased by one. We're up to five accounts now. And here is our new test test client here at testtest.com. Now, if for some reason your WHMCS is not communicating with CWP, check the server that you have WHMCS on. You may have a firewall there that the CWP server needs to be whitelisted. So from WHMCS, we can go back here and we can issue other module commands like suspend. And we'll just give this a test reason here. Okay. And that communicates with CWP and we'll refresh our page. And we can see that test test has now been suspended. The disk usage is marked full and the account is now suspended. And we can also go back to WHMCS and unsuspend that account. Say yes. Go back to CWP, refresh our page. And here we can see our test test is active again. And we can also change their package and change their password. And that's it. Now we can create CWP accounts from WHMCS. For testing, we can create, remove, suspend, or unsuspend new accounts from our server. And that's how to integrate WHMCS with CWP. For more information, please consult the following link. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks very much for watching.